Hello and welcome back to the Developing Solutions with Sitecore Print Experience Manager video training series. In this video, we'll look at doing the project planning for implementing the PXM project. So here, first we'll look at the output, and this is a document that's been provided to us by our designer. And we're going to look for various things like underlying structure of the output. So in particular, you know, what's the purpose of the document? Where's that information coming from? Um, as well as what we need to do to automate this. So we're going to look at a few aspects of the document which uh, make sense for laying out in a print world if you have a designer and they're laying that out manually, but we're going to look at aspects that we can uh, automate and how to further structure that so that PXM can place items on that page programmatically rather than manually. Next, we'll look at can we automate this fully uh, or are there designer tasks that need to occur afterwards? Sometimes this may not be a question that you need to ask. If your workflow dictates that there always needs to be a designer reviewing it, then you don't need to achieve full automation. But if you're looking at scenarios where uh, you're having personalized documents uh, on the fly created by PXM uh, or you're using the online document generator, you need to make sure that the output that's been created from PXM looks good regardless of how that's created. And so in those cases, we do need to automate that document fully so that the output uh, looks as professional as if it was done by a designer. Now, in this case here, I'm really fortunate to have been allowed to use the uh, document provided to us from one of our Sitecore partners. This is a document from Nonlinear Creations, and they actually produce a book called uh, Sitecore The Nonlinear Way, which is a a uh, very large document. It's uh, just over uh, 130 pages. It contains a sum of a whole number of articles uh, written by them over the years by uh, Sitecore MVPs and other uh, internal staff. And so I'm using this document in conjunction with my launch Sitecore content. Uh, the launch Sitecore content uh, is very similar. It's a series of articles um, also written by named authors. And so in those cases, I'm using the two because the launch Sitecore content uh, is nicely available for you. And this design is a nice real world example that we're going to work from uh, as you're learning PXM. So let's go and take a look at this document a little bit further. So we're here looking at the home page. So we have a little bit of background information here. We have a home page, uh, we have a table of contents. Uh, this in turn has numbers referring to the pages of the various articles in the document and PXM allows us to automate that which is excellent. So we're going to do that in uh, one of the more advanced uh, topics in the training. And we also have these images as uh, section headers. Now we don't have uh, an introduction section from our launch site course content, so in our implementation we're actually going to skip that. But what we do have is these chapter headers. So we have chapter one uh, and then within a chapter you have an article and the article has a title, uh, has an author, that author information, and it has an abstract. Now here's one of the uh, examples where uh, this design is going to have to be tweaked a little bit to accommodate our uh, design and automation from PXM. And this is our first example here. So we have this abstract text and then we have our article text. And you can see that they have different uh, font and uh, paragraph styles for those two. Now in our launch site core content we actually do have an abstract field and we do have a body field. These are separate fields in site core. And they're here in our example provided from our designer as a single field. And so what we're going to do is actually implement this as two fields. And this top field, we're going to set some properties so that this text box, text box grows and pushes down the other body content as well. So we're going to start to tweak the de design to support a lot more automation. And InDesign is, is certainly capable of doing these things, um, but it's common that designers um, don't use these uh, tips and tricks because it does require a little bit more work up front. And often it's just easier to um, paste that text in and make those changes after the fact than it is to accommodate these levels of automation. So that's one of the things that we're going to be doing as we implement this project. Secondly, we're going to be looking at the overrides within a document. So if we look here at our chapter one marketing and our paragraph style, 
you can see there's a little plus here. And what that plus indicates is that this is an override. And so we have a style, again, paragraph styles in InDesign are somewhat similar to CSS. And this is kind of like uh, throwing a style element on some text uh, in your uh, a site core CMS in rich text. And that's not exactly best practice. And so what we're going to do is, as we're going through this document, we're going to be adding more and more paragraph styles so that we don't uh, use overrides and so that we have definite uh, styles that we can reference as we're outputting this document. So that's the other thing that we're going to do is, is start to eliminate uh, overrides in our paragraph styles as we go through building this. Another example here, if we go to the very end, we have a list of authors. And again, this is implemented as a single text frame that has a number of uh, images that are manually placed. And so if we're choosing to automate this, you can see here that there's no structural relationship between this image and the text that is placed on the page. PXM, uh, of course, likes a structural uh, relationship between the two. As this text gets larger, we want to be able to uh, place the next image and the next image um, properly when we're building this document. So we're going to look at various aspects of, uh, again, just like that abstract field in growing and shrinking text, we're going to use other InDesign tricks within our PXM project in order to fully automate this output. So next we're going to look at the content model in the CMS itself. We want to make sure that we have all the data that that page is expecting. We want to make sure that we have all the fields and we want to look at the information architecture itself. Do we have nice hierarchies that we can iterate through or are we having to look at things like uh, search and metadata for selecting content for building this document? Um, is all this information in Sitecore itself? Often in uh, other PXM implementations, there's information coming from PIM systems or SQL Server. You may have to write uh, custom queries and custom renderers to go and retrieve that information. Uh, does it need to be augmented and, and how do we need to augment it? And so we'll go and take a look at that content and we'll go and uh, look at some changes that we need to possibly make to our content in order to accommodate that design more successfully. So I'm here back in my Sitecore site, and if we go to the article section, that's under About Launch Sitecore, you can see that I have uh, chapter headings. So getting started, for example, this is uh, effectively a chapter heading. Uh, in Launch Sitecore, it's called an article group. And this has really uh, essentially a chapter title, getting started. It has an abstract uh, and it has some body copy. The abstract field and the body copy are uh, rich text. This makes a little bit more sense if we look at something like uh, the Sitecore UIs. And you can see here that our body, of course, has rich text and uh, more importantly, images within that rich text. So that's uh, effectively the, the content model here. So we have uh, these chapters, we have these articles, and the articles have a body and they have an abstract. And the abstract field is uh, HTML. And we're gonna look at that and see if uh, potentially we should change that. Well, be a bit of a surprise later on. So here we also have uh, contributors and these contributors are uh, effectively the author on the page. Now, one thing that I'm noticing here in our list of contributors for this launch site course site item is that there is no contributor selected and our design expects that author. It would look very empty on that page if that author wasn't there. So we're actually um, going to use a Sitecore trick, which is validation on that field. We wanna make sure that that field has a contributor. So it's not really uh, an InDesign skill or a PXM skill. It's really just information architecture. These items do need to have a contributor. So we're gonna set some validation uh, on top of that. Um, but aside from that, the, the content looks good. It's a very uh, similar match here between uh, what we have in our launch site core content tree versus our output for our document. Uh, there is even a team section here so we can iterate through these team members and output that as well. Uh, one thing as we're iterating through and building out site core content, the order in the content tree is really the order that's going to be queried and uh, built in our document. Uh, you know, of course, unless you 
code that implementation differently. But by default, when you're making queries from Sitecore, it does return things back in the order of the repository. And our launch Sitecore site item uh, is really that introductory item. So we're going to move that up, and that's going to be uh, something that we'll see as well. OK, so now that we've taken a look at our source document, and we've taken a look at the content within the CMS, I think we're starting to get to some of the core concepts of uh, good PXM implementation, and that ideally the inputs and the outputs are both well-structured and complementary. So for example, in our case here, the document structure of having chapters and articles and a list of authors is very complementary with our launch site core content of having uh, section headings or article groups and articles and also we have a list of authors. That's a very good match within our document. Uh, things that are much more difficult uh, matches would be something like if this document was much closer to a magazine, it would be much harder to automate. You can still use PXM, uh, but at that point, PXM is much more of a designer tool where you're just simply using Sitecore as a content repository to uh, drag and drop content items onto static documents. Uh, another example of uh, something that's less well-structured or less complementary on the CMS side is, say, for example, if we had our articles in item buckets, instead of having a nice little hierarchy that we could iterate through to build our document, we might have to have some methodology of using search or using metadata in order to select content uh, for building out that document. And so, um, Again, when you're looking at that structure or looking at that project, these are the things that uh, really help uh, influence or help you understand uh, the, the exact amount of effort that goes into building out this project. So as a budding PXM developer, what resources do you have at your disposal? Well, of course, there's this launch site core training material that we're going through now. All of the uh, associated source material the source code, the launch site core site, um, and the design of the document itself uh, will be available either on launchsitecore.net or on GitHub. Uh, if you're a Sitecore partner and you have access to Jetstream, then the Jetstream brochure and the Jetstream price list uh, are also very complementary to that content um, and are a good uh, example of PXM implementations. Uh, of course, the PXM implementation for the Jetstream brochure and price list are available to anyone. They are on SDN, uh, but Jetstream itself is typically limited to uh, Sitecore partners. Um, if you're a uh, if you're very interested in using uh, Jetstream or understanding Jetstream, uh, please contact your Sitecore account representative, and this can be provided to you as well. Uh, lastly, there's the symposium demonstration site. This was uh, demonstrated at Sitecore Symposium last year and uh, incorporated a few new concepts such as the online document generator and the rendition builder, as well as using a lot of other um, particular PXM code methodologies. And so there's a lot of code and a lot of stuff out there, um, as well as there's blogs. So I occasionally blog about uh, little simple fixes and things like that. And there's also a few other uh, bloggers within the community as well. So. A lot of information, a lot of source code, a lot of example methodologies um, that you can go through in addition to, of course, what we're going through in this material.